Hi, this is Paula Gloria welcoming you to Farther Down the Rabbit Hole. I want to do a show today that's a little bit more meditative because I covered a lot of material the other day about the Kennan Bunk Report uh, warning, the Kennan Bunk Port warning. And that was where Cynthia McKinney and Cindy Sheehan signed uh, a little statement that was made up by Webster Tarpley and presented to them by very effective 9-11 and Green Party activist up in Vermont. And it said that if there is any act of terror against the United States, we should be very careful to consider who this act of terror might be perpetrated by. And it might be these very same ones that are taking away our constitutional freedoms, the ones that are raising their own private armies, and uh, you know we should be very alert. Unfortunately, after the signatures were taken, one or two of them retracted it and said, oh, I never really signed that, or I didn't know what I was signing. And then what I read was a statement made by uh, Jim Fetzer, who is, I think he's written 28 books. He's a professor emeritus of philosophy. He's also uh, been in the Marine Corps himself. And he's talking about the, um, the, the concern about this private army. So what I want to do is today, you know, after you know, laying all that on you, is to show how powerful Tantra is. And Tantra is the term that's used in the East, and that was, you know, mostly where I studied these spiritual practices. Although I'm, I'm certain exists, it exists in the West. I think it's uh, the esoteric tradition, you know, Hermes Trismegistus and what's coming from Egypt. Although you'll see that within Christianity and even in Judaism, you see the Egyptian influence. Somebody, uh, Barbara Rosenfeld, uh, a fellow producer here at Manhattan Neighborhood Network, called to my attention that circumcision was practiced by the Egyptians. And I said, well, my gosh, if it's to make a, a body of people more distinctive and other bodies, uh, uh, groups of people are also following the same practice, they cease to be so distinctive. But in, in, in any case, uh, I showed to you in that other show Webster Tarpley's book, 9-11 Synthetic Terror, which is based on false flag terrorism. And I have been bugging and bugging and bugging Webster that we could do a show solely on the cover of his book, where we just go across each picture on it and we understand the different institutions that have the money and the firepower and the ability to, to set in place, put in place the different patsies that then, uh, you know, take the blame for uh, the different events that the media um, will uh, sort of drum into our heads has a certain spin on it, but if you investigate it and you look into it more deeply, you'll see uh, it, it just doesn't make sense. They didn't have the ability to, to pull off what uh, you know, the big institution is claiming that they pulled off. And then I think I also showed how the real saints can oftentimes be uh, a problem to, to the status quo. And this was an example of one saint who I admired. And those who follow, those Tibetans that follow the Dalai Lama will say that this is the work of the devil. And that's another thing I'm concerned about. When you hear this term, ooh, satanic worship and the work of the devil, if you have real spiritual practice running and you're really connecting with the transcendent and with the divine and you feel that within yourself, you're going to see that everywhere else. And you're going to become a worshiper of everyone and of everything. And your ability to command on the laws of nature means you are that much at peace with yourself and you know from where you come. And as a result of knowing from where you come, you have a patience and an understanding of everything that happens around you. But we, off, we have to keep cultivating that understanding, and that's the purpose of spiritual practice. It's not to make us mind-controlled and indoctrinated and, um, you know, where we sort of run away from that which sort of ruffles our feathers and makes us uncomfortable. But that type of spiritual practice that lets us welcome each day in a very dynamic way, you know, we're not uh, on antidepressants. We're not relying on the great herbs of nature. For sure, nature, uh, as, as an expression of the earth element, there are whole huge bodies of knowledge of, of Ayurveda. 
They say Ayurveda started when great sages at the beginning of history, at the beginning of time, got together and realized that once mankind was going to be generated and he was going to be, uh, you know, part of the earthly play, he was going to run into trouble and he needed help. And this is a body of knowledge that shows how you bring the different herbs to, uh, to human beings in such a way that they can balance themselves, bring themselves back to alignment with their, um, with their original makeup. And Ayurveda has an understanding of vata, pitta, and kapha. And, and these are different combinations of the elements. And each one of us has a, a primary uh, balance that we come in with. And you need a really wise Ayurvedic doctor to understand what your balance is. Because in a certain way, precisely because of the fact that we have a human body and we're enjoying this dimension, we're all a little bit off balance. But we want to be off balance in such a way that we utilize that off balancedness so that we can um, use that tool and go into life and uh, discover how to achieve our soul purpose. And when we've achieved our soul purpose, being in alignment with doing it, then gives support to our body and we find that we grow healthier and stronger and more, and, we, and we generate greater health and strength in the environment. And so this, uh, this man, I've only read a few of his books, he is an example of such a saint, and that's why I, I put him up. And Tantric Grounds and Paths has to do with, uh, you know, understanding what real ritual is in life and how we can use ritual along with the, the different herbs to bring a better life. I would say that in this day and age, the uh, understanding of herbs has been abused because once you get money involved, oh yeah, that was the first premise of, of Ayurveda, is that the doctor never practices for money. Because if you start practicing for money and you're s concerned about your security, pretty soon you're going to be looking for disease, and when you know money's getting low, my God, you might even generate it. And we definitely see this type of mischief in our own um, pharmaceutical companies. So what I want to do now is uh, take you on a little meditation. I've got this entire thing posted up on YouTube, and I encourage you to check um, the website of rabbitholecentral.tv because we're starting with live video streaming. And with live video streaming, we're going to be able to get calls from you and I'm going to gather those and, uh, and play them sometimes on my m and shows. But I think I'm going to try to, to start dividing things. I'll have some things that are for, for the Internet and some things that are for my Manhattan neighborhood audience. The only thing that I miss about my Manhattan neighborhood audience show here at Farther Down the Rabbit Hole is I don't get much feedback from you. But on YouTube, my gosh, I'm getting comments all the time. And I've learned so much from my viewers. So what Harold Channer called to my attention with Buckminster Fuller, uh, it's really autodidactic. It's self-teaching. The viewers have taught me as much as, as I have to them by presenting the videos. And I certainly cannot thank them enough. And I'm going to try to gather this all on um, on my website and uh, sort of figure out the right places. Joe Friendly joined me last week for the live video streams. They were excellent. We went clear from swastikas to, uh, to circumcision, so, uh, so it was really exciting. So now what I want to do is I uh, have a little meditation of around my apartment, and this is posted on my website or on YouTube. Actually, I haven't posted it quite yet, but probably by the time this gets out. It will be posted. I was fortified by the fact that when I put up the video of me doing yoga in Gramercy Park, I was just so impressed with the viewers because, again, the comments are as valuable as the postings. And I'm hoping to be able to put on my own website a comment so that we can, can get this tight. And I'm really excited about it. And as much as I believe in the dire situation of our country, um, you know, if, if this is the last broadcast you get from me, well, you know, it's been real. But um, if it isn't, 
let's go farther down the rabbit hole and let's learn how to become real masters by interacting with each other. So now I'm going to take you on my apartment site. And this is me early in the morning after I have mopped my floors, getting ready for yoga. Turn on some nice music, make yourself feel good, and feel the joy of life. Those are my dad's x-rays. I'm happy because, you know, he's, he's better now. He's walking without a cane. This is the great master who knew huge uh, racial abuse by the British at the time of the Raj. Oh, sorry about that. It's a little bit out of focus. And uh, became a great master, gave a lot of hope to people. He made the rich generous, and he gave hope to the poor. That's my idea of a master. Well, this is the same thing on my computer. So I'm doing a little play there. You can see that. I think that was my. Uh, I think a posting I put for Guru Purnima, which is a good time to. That's the master that I studied with, Sri Sai Kaleshwar Swami. I like to mop the floors in the morning before I sit down and do yoga. This is a, a 16th century saint of Tibet and also controversial uh, with the Dalai Lama group. I always go for the underdogs, very powerful master. That's a Jay-Z Knight who channels Ramtha, the Enlightened One. Oh yeah, that's me at Lake Tahoe. My brother used to have a house right on the lake. Uh, that's done by uh, an artist who I really admire here in New York. I met it at Union Square. Oh, this is interesting. Um, Krishna is playing with the gopis. They were taking a bath in the river, and they put their saris out on the banks, and Krishna came along and hid their saris. I, I don't know, he put them up in the tree. And what this shows is that it's a, it's a metaphor saying that in order to know God, you have to come naked. You can't be disguising yourself and to be hiding, you know who it is you really are. This is the same artist who says, instead of history repeats itself, history defeats itself. And he's um, comparing Nehru playing um, when Rome burned in the same way that uh, Bush was playing when uh, New Orleans was, was drowning.
I've used this in a lot of my Webster Tarpley call-ins when he called in as a background. There's Bush playing on the TV. The artists always tell us what's happening. They're the barometers. My clean, my clean floors. <laughs> The point of this is, is if you take care of yourself and you balance yourself and you have a nice practice, then you don't have to rely on the antidepressant drugs. And, you know, not that I'm condemning somebody who is using them because I know we all have to figure out a balance. But I tell you, spiritual practice is very important and an effective practice and a master that knows how to, um, you know, to hand out the real power. <laughs> That's something I found on the street, and I was sort of impressed, so I put it up. You know, the, the male-female energy, tantric polarity. God will provide. That's from Sandy Kane. <laughs> and that's the Union Square clock. So you see it's 8.15 in the morning, get up early. That's the Divine Mother cutting away all that's bad. She's holding weapons in her hands. Divine weapons. This is the Jesus Temple. Oh, now there we go. I'm glad this came up. That is uh, a statue of Dattatreya. And Dattatreya usually shows up in uh, places that are not socially acceptable, in the graveyards and so on. The value of um, practice of the practices that have to do with the graveyards is just simply it reminds us that life's not very long. I mean, when you, when you go into a cemetery and you see all the gravestones, you realize that while those people were alive, all these things were, that they were doing in their plans and their empires that they were creating, it was so important. But at the end of the day, everybody lies in the ground just the same. And that's why there are certain practices that are done in these environments, because it's very sobering. It really reminds you of how short life is. So Dattatreya is often uh, in the mythology is found around the graveyards and he's always got a cow with him who symbolizes the Divine Mother and he always has dogs. Usually there's four dogs and they represent the four Vedas or at least that's how the mythology has grown. Um, there's usually deep wisdom in how the myths grow up. But he's also known as an extraordinarily powerful, um, it, his, his energy, just like, like the wildness of like three heads on one body, 
it's there's there's a wildness of the energy that you tune into. You you can say that these gods are like principles of nature. They're um, they're ways that those have been observant of of how nature acts have sort of anthropomorphized these energies, and then uh, through a, a more immature understanding, you have the, the, the many deities and the deity worship. But when that's called paganism, and then you just sort of throw out the whole tradition because you say, oh, you know, that's pagan, um, and it's, it's not what we have, and it turns out you don't really even understand what we have. What really does circumcision mean? What is that sacrifice of Abraham? What is the resurrection of Jesus when he said he came to fulfill the covenant? What what did that mean? You know, what does it mean to become a master? So, anyway, on with the meditation in my apartment. And <laughs> that's Sri Sai Kaleshwar Swami. He'll be in L.A. in a couple weeks. Alice Coltrane recently died. And they celebrated her ascension, St. Saint, Saint John the Divine. That's my snake. Kundalini energy. That's where I'll put my put my yoga mat there. Here we have Isis and Horus, Horus and Isis. <laughs> As above, so below, in the computer and outside in reality. These are my mammograms. I'm going to be doing a, a whole section on that in the future. Stay tuned to rabbitholecentral.tv, and uh, that may take me a few weeks. To Those are the calcium deposits, and uh, I resisted a biopsy, and later on I'll, uh, I'll explain what my reasoning was. If you have any doctors out there that want to make some comments, I'm certainly open to it because I think uh, we really need to put our heads together to figure out uh, better health. These mammograms were done October 10th, 2005. I have a little trouble focusing there. I tried to come in, er, er, you know, closer and that sort of ruined everything. But anyway, be sure to stay in touch with this website because um, 
We're having a sputtery start, but people are coming around and helping me. I'm finding some wonderful techies who are, uh, you know, giving me the assistance of, of their knowledge. And, uh, you know, together we can, we can work together and create a better reality. Harold Channer talks about, you know, what it's like, to, you know, to help each other. He said, in the old days, if your car was, uh, you know, wasn't working, you, you know, go into the local cafe and you meet someone, hey, you know, take a look at my carburetor out here. And, it, and that's how they did it in a small town. But in a place even like New York City, we can, we can put our heads together, too, and create new realities in different ways. So um, public access TV has really provided exactly that type of community. And it's a wonderful thing when people get together, not for the sake of commerce, but for the sake of, um, of, of creating something. It's, it's just wonderful. I mean, the, the real artistry that just has to give, and it's not sitting there doing that barter game, if I give you this, what will you give me? Um, and I think that's where the solution is going to come. And I have this vision called sustainable media, where I want to get uh, local businesses more involved and the restrictions that we've had at MNN because we can't be commercial. Uh, we won't be having on the internet. But there's something so beautiful about not being commercial. Uh, if you want to just give money towards something that you feel is doing something good, it really comes back to you. I think the my first charity was PETA, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. I think when I started giving money to this charity, that's when things really started to change for me in my retail store. Because it shows some type of faith uh, with the energies that, that you're, you're taking in, but you're also giving out, and you're becoming a dynamic part of the economy that's creating something greater and greater. I think now there's, uh, there's come about a great cynicism that's sort of commensurate with the, uh, the amount of anti-depression drugs that people are taking. And that cynicism um, makes you feel like hopeless because you, you start to read and hear that, oh, you know, all the charities are just wasting the money or if you give money to charity, it all goes into administration and, and overhead. And thus people get discouraged. And even something here, like in my meditation with uh, my mammograms, we can learn huge. We can learn huge things from the human body. It's it's the temple of God, and there's good things with uh, regular medicine or traditional, and there's things to be questioned. When it becomes too much of a big business, uh, are people um, is their health suffering because of it? And I feel uh, we can do better. So thank you for joining me. My name is Paula Gloria, and this has been an episode of Farther Down the Rabbit Hole.